Wonderful. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Um, I'm Axel. I'm the Managing Director of the RIPE NCC. I do see a couple of new faces here. It's very nice, also old faces. And um, I'll give an update on the RIPE NCC, what we are doing, what's, uh, what we're currently thinking about. I'm happy to be here. I'm sorry to be here late. But last time we were here, I said I would come back. So I'm back now, and I'm saying I'm coming back again later on for longer than 22 hours. It's, uh, air traffic was a bit of an issue yesterday. Right, so the RIPE NCC. What is it? Um, you probably know that we are the secretariat for the RIPE community, everybody with an interest in, in uh, the Internet and IP networking comes together within RIPE. RIPE is a big uh, unincorporated community. We were set up in the beginning to become the secretariat for the community and to see that there are meetings, that they are organized properly, that somebody can pick up the phone when that is necessary, um, and uh, also relatively quickly to maintain the RIPE database. Because it was a loose community, it would have been nice to know who was using which addresses, address blocks at the time, and that's what the RIPE data database became, and we uh, implemented that. So by now we are running as one of the five regional internet registries, or performing the functions of a regional internet registry. We are uh, looking after Europe, the Middle East, parts of Central Asia, with computers doing funny things. Uh, our service reach is rather big with uh, 76 countries. Well, that's okay, that's not the issue, but there's so many languages that makes it a little bit uh, complex here and there. So as a, regional, uh, as a regional internet registry, we do allocate internet numbering resources, IP addresses and ASNs. Uh, we do a lot of other things. Uh, we do trainings. We build tools for uh, the community, for our members. We do measurements, we do training, we do outreach, we talk to governments, regulators, the police forces, and things like that. The idea here is that we are doing things that are useful for all of the community. Uh, we are neutral and impartial. We do things that we, need to do, that, we, that we need to do for all of our members in the community. So that's of our mantra, neutral and partial, open, and inclusive. So we are a, as the RIPE NCC, the RIPE Network Coordination Center, we are a uh, incorporated entity. We formerly sit in Amsterdam. We are independent. We are not for profit. We are very much bottom up, inclusive, um, a membership organization. That means that our members um, give us the funds that we need to work for them and for the community. So we are fully autonomous in that sense. We are only doing what our members want us to do, and we're not listening to, to anybody else who wants to slip us some money and ask to do this or that. That's not what we're doing. We're open, transparent, neutral, impartial. I mentioned that anything and everything that we are doing is documented on, on the web. We have an executive board. My bosses would tell me what to do. They have meetings. Those uh, meetings are minuted. The minutes are available on the web as well. So we have offices uh, in... Amsterdam, it's the, sort of the main office and a smaller one in Dubai. Also, we have uh, two staff members in Moscow. Overall, about 140 staff members going up and down over, over the course of the years, um, generally slightly up if you look at it on the larger scale. So, um, like I said, we act as the uh, regional Internet Registry. We do some other things as well. So the highlights for our activities in the course of 2016 um, we always document those things in what we call the activity plan, um, another document available on our website that uh, defines what we are doing and also why we are doing it. So one of the focal points there is maintaining a strong registry. So a regional internet registry keeps a registry of uh, internet blocks and who is using them. Uh, it's of eminent importance that that thing is correct and complete and that is the focus. We look at the quality of the registry and we want to improve it wherever possible, by all means possible. Um, so another thing that we have been doing this year is also the membership survey, um, or the 
the survey, not only the members uh, can, can answer and have answered. So the idea here is that we need to get our ears to the ground to understand what our community wants from us and uh, that we can collect that feedback and uh, make our decisions based on that. So another thing that we are intensifying or have been intensifying over the last couple of years already and still into this year is outreach external relations throughout our service regions. Now we run the big uh, RIPE meetings twice a year. We do the ANOX, we do the MANOX, but we uh, also do you know, more regional meetings, member lunches, trainings, uh, all um, possibilities, all um, opportunities to talk to our community and our members and those who are concerned with what we are doing. Um, we are also looking at our sort of processes on a continual basis also to look for you know, greater efficiency and you know, keeping the costs down, doing more for the same sort of money, that type of thing. Um, enhanced statistics and analysis. We sit on a treasure trove of information and for many, many years we have made that uh, available. Um, now enhanced statistics, basically we want to look at how to do this better, how to make it more usable, to make it easier to understand um, on, on, on the interface side. So that's what we are doing this year as well. And I'll talk about the RPKI validator a little bit later as well. Um, we do support MENOC and ENOC. Um, we have done a redesign of the website based on the community's wishes. We I think it's uh, better now in terms of navigation, content organization, nicer design, clear, um, mobile friendly. I did look at it on my mobile and it worked quite well. Um, so there's a uh, lot of things on there that, that are new and improved. We have listened to your welcome, but uh, to, your, to your feedback, but welcome even more of that. If you uh, see further the need for improvement or have ideas, we are happy to, to implement them. Next iteration. So 2016 is not over yet. Um, it's still nice and warm outside. Winter hasn't come, but it will. But there are still quite a lot of things that we want to do before the year is over. Now, obviously, in a couple of weeks, three or four, um, a big RIPE meeting is coming up in Madrid. So that'll be fun. It's also a really, really big one already. But uh, still, there's time to register. If you want to come, you're more than welcome. Also, during the RIPE meeting, we'll have a general meeting. We have two member meetings, two general meetings per year uh, at the RIPE meetings. This one will again take place on the Wednesday afternoon. We'll talk about this in a little while as well. Before the RIPE meeting, we'll have a hackathon again on uh, RIPE Atlas. Um, that was always quite successful when we did it, so we want to do it again. We have elections upcoming for the uh, Number of Resource Organizations Number Council, Council basically those people who are performing the function of the address council within the ICANN ASO. Um, we'll have a couple of member lunches coming up in Zagreb, Kiev, and Amman in terms of regional outreach. And yes, we will move to new offices in Amsterdam. We wanted to do this next month, uh, but it's a big move. We'll do that in December. I'm fairly certain we'll do this this year because otherwise we're out in the streets. Nice big office, more open so we can communicate with, with each other. Those of you who might have been to the Amsterdam offices that we currently offer the last 20 years have um, know that it's a bit of a quirky thing uh, distributed through many floors. And um, it's, it's pretty, but it's not very practical. So the new office will be pretty and practical. Right, a uh, big RIPE meeting coming up in Madrid. Like I said, the draft meeting plan is now there. Um, the participation, as usual, well, I talk about you coming, but of course coming is possible f physically, but also remotely. We have remote participation for all the events and all the meetings, uh, all the, all the uh, sessions. So if you can't travel because you have to stay in the office and work, well, you can still uh, check what's going on and participate there remotely. And of course, we have the website as usual. I mentioned the general meeting that we'll be doing again. And this one is actually quite full of interesting stuff. They can be a little bit um, boring and simple because we do all the routine stuff, but this has a couple of non-routine items there. Now, again, um, registration is open, and it's a, it's a general meeting for members, so members can attend. But, of course, as we usually do, we have the split in, in two parts. One is of the, the public part in, within the, member, uh, the RIPE NCC Services Working Group, 
open for everybody, and then we evacuate the room, and you know, people come back in again with their member tags, and that's then the closed member stop. A uh, couple um, things that, that we want to discuss this time, as usual, that's the routine part, the activity plan and budget for the next year. It's published already, and I'm fairly sure they all have read it. Um, so you have all an opinion, and uh, that's the, the possibility, the, the opportunity there to talk about this. Um, also, the RIPE NCC is a not-for-profit association. We do see over the last couple of years quite a significant increase in membership. With, uh, but that's something that we can't control. Members are welcome, of course, and they bring in new money. But over the last couple of years, it happens so that we have money left over at the end of the year, which is also nice, but we don't want to accumulate too much of that. Um, also, you know, for tax purposes, we don't want to pay taxes if we don't have to. If it's members' money, we can also give it back. So the uh, decision here will be whether we want to give it back and how much of it we will give back for next year to our members. So, um, conflicts. I don't know conflicts. Who would have conflicts? But we have an um, arbitration panel that uh, looks after issues our members might have with ourselves or my, our members might have with each other when they sort of uh, debate who is uh, rightfully using address space, for instance. And there's a panel of arbiters there, um, and they have procedures they follow when they look at arbitration cases. And from time to time, we have changes in the procedures. The procedures then are presented to the general meeting, and the members will hopefully sign them off. Um, another interesting thing here is the issue on charges of for legacy internet resource holders, we do see, as we run out of IPv4, that there are many ways um, of getting hold of IPv4 address play, uh, space, and here and there, there are a couple of loopholes that we discover over, over time. Um, as the RIPE NCC, we follow our procedures and our policies, obviously, as we have to, but also we report to our membership and to the community at large what we see happening, and occasionally things are happening that uh, the community thinks are not quite the spirit of the, of the policy. So this is one of the issues that we uh, want to resolve there. And again, it's, it's out uh, uh, documented in the documents for the general meeting. If you have an opinion, please come and uh, talk to us about it. There will be voting there. Also, the um, charging scheme. Now we have this wonderful charging scheme these days. And... Um, this is my personal opinion. It's very simple. Everybody pays the same. It's great. We have lots of members, and the amount of money everybody pays is sort of relatively low. Well, I'm saying that. Um, we do have, uh, we, we did have a different charging scheme, more complicated, um, and many years ago we changed it, or the members changed it, and now we have so many new members coming in that um, they don't know the, the history there and of course also the distribution of address space between members changes over time and we have um, quite a clear interest in discussing the charging scheme and maybe changing it again. So at this general meeting we don't want to change anything but the board has said we hear that there is an interest uh, in, in, in de debating charging scheme principles so this is the opportunity we want to give to members uh, to um, air their thoughts and uh, to give the board the opportunity here in terms of feedback to understand whether there is a need to really open the debate on the specifics of a charging scheme. So that is money. That's interesting for you. Right. Um, RIPE NC, um, NRONC election, like I said, and we heard earlier, there's, there's ICANN, there's the uh, addressing, address support organization there, and there's an address council the, one of the main uh, tasks of the Address Council is to look at global address policies and to make sure that they are all debated properly within the regions and then toss a global policy off to the ICANN board for ratification. Also, the Address Council does uh, nominate people to the ICANN board, so it's, it's a fairly important thing. And uh, we have ongoing elections there, so that's, that's one of the issues. Um, uh, yeah, that's uh, electronic voting for the first time. Previously, we, we did it uh, somewhat informally, but 
it's nice to do it, but it's it's yeah. So this is this is quite efficient the way we want to do it. Um, details on the slide, and the results as usual will be announced on the Friday morning on the plenary. Um, number of LIRs, local uh, internet registries. Um, now a member can hold multiple registries. So we end up this slide. This is the number of registries that, that we currently see. It's 14,448 at the end of September or within September this year. Um, last year it was 12,600. You see is a really up and to the right, quite steep. Um, we don't see an end to the trend yet. We, of course, we are looking very, very careful because it all has financial implications. Uh, but like I said, there are lots of new members coming in and it's, it's quite, quite uh, exciting, a bit of a roller coaster ride there as well. Um, see, new members are different than old members. Uh, we see that happening. Um, the, the main change that we see is that the old you know, members of like 15, 10 years ago were typically the, the internet service provider. They were providing uh, internet services to their customers. Now what we see is there is a much larger percentage of what we maybe would call enter, enter, um, sorry, uh, enterprise members. People or companies that are not providing internet services but using numbers internally. So we scratch our heads and apart from running the survey, we think these are people that might have different needs for services than uh, our sort of traditional membership has. So we need to understand that. We are a membership organization. We need to service our members to be able to do it properly. We need to understand what your uh, requirements are. So that's what we, what we want to do here. We uh, reach out, we, uh, like I said, membership lunches and the survey and talking to you in person is, is important. We need to be able to, to see that uh, our services are aligned with your needs. What's our current service portfolio? Is this still what we need to do? Are there changes that we need to do for no, new membership, or the current membership, let's say? Like I said, the RIPE SPT survey, um, we want to help our members in the community. We need to understand the needs. Again, so similar story here. Um, we are, of course, talking to the board always uh, about our, our ideas, what we think we should be doing next year. We put the activity plan debate that with the, well, actually not that much, we present it to the community and there's not much comment, not that much feedback on those particular points uh, in time. So we run the survey as well to reach out to more people. And the thing here, obviously we do this uh, through a third party, so it's a neutral party, it's not us to uh, know who said what, but we get the you know, gist of it. Um, we had the biggest response ever, and very nice. Uh, more than 4,400 people have uh, responded. Well, it's quite a nice number. Um, of our 23 media members, 15 answered. Thank you very much if you're in the room. And the others, consider it for next time. We do these, these uh, surveys every three years, roughly. Um, yeah. And now, of course, we are very busy. Uh, looking at the, at the feedback and sorting through it and organizing it and, and to understand uh, what the main points are. And at the right meeting, we'll present again to uh, the community from it, what we think we, we, we saw there and what our first reactions to that is, what we want to do with that feedback and what we think where we should be going over the next uh, couple of years. Uh, activity plan is fine, but also activities need to be paid for, so we have a budget there, and that uh, details uh, quite specifically what the membership fees go into for. So um, we have a couple of changes in the budget for next year, excuse me, uh, compared with this year. The main things here, external relations, um, we are told we need to do more of that. We had a sort of a strategy retreat with the board. The board tells us also do more. This is important. Governments need to be kept in the fold and, and new uh, representatives, they need to get into the fold. Um, like I said, regulators, law enforcement, all those non-traditional people that are not, not part of the traditional community we need to talk to. So we're putting some activity, some, some uh, funds there. 
Um, also, over the last couple of years, we've done a couple of things that we thought were good for the internet. Um, we financed this or that um, project. Um, we contributed to this or that organization. And that is all, was all, we thought, relatively clear in the activity plan. We got feedback from that. We had, uh, for instance, the, the uh, ITF talking to us about a contribution for their future. And that it was all typically um, received very well by the community and by our members. But we thought it's getting a little bit woolly there. It would be nice if you would bundle all those activities and all those contributions in one budget line. So we're doing this for the first time this year around for 2017, good for the internet contributions. Have a look what we are doing there. Uh, information security, hey, information security is important. Uh, we are increasing our, our um, finances in, in that area. We have just hired a new person there as well, just to give it proper attention. Um, now that's spending more money, but I said we get more people in as well. The good news here is that the expenses per member go down by 6% in the budget for next year versus this year. Well, down is good in expenses per member. Um, staff numbers, like I said, is, staff numbers are increasing um, because, hey, we're doing more things, so that's, that's what's happening. We are adding the seven FTEs against this year. Regional presence, uh, regional meetings, community meetings, Member lunch. Basically, what we are doing is we take every opportunity we have to come and, and talk to you. Um, not only our own events, we also go to other conferences, other events uh, like uh, NOGs in, in countries. We present a bit and try to engage with the community there. Um, of course, ENOC, ongoing support for, for you guys, um, governments within the region, and hey, 76 countries means 76 governments. We will uh, be able to talk to some of them. We have a fairly good understanding, and now they have a fairly good understanding in parts to, of uh, what we are doing. And then there is a new person in that particular department, and we have to start again. So it's a bit rolling the stone uphill there, but that's something that we think is eminently important also to keep the government and the regulators of our members' backs. So as long as they understand that the internet is going well, that the internet contributes positively to the economy, and so we are part of this, and they can be part of this as well, uh, of the community, and even the policy making, that's a good thing. Uh, regional presence, like I said, we have two people. We have Max and Alex in uh, Moscow, I was in Amsterdam, in Moscow, um, and the idea is to have the engagement to, to, the, to the local community it better also in the local language better than we can do from Amsterdam. So meeting our members, um, we did or we will have done by the end of this year 53 events in 39 countries. That is not bad. So the this is orange, so the past events that we've already done, three more coming up. I mentioned earlier it was uh, Zagreb, Kiev, and Amman. I think still coming this year. PDP. Um, now we do count, we do check who is uh, con uh, contributing in the, who's participating in the, in the PDP, in the policy development process, and Armenian participation could be better. So if you think it's important what we do with addresses and how we allocate them, see what we are, what we are doing there, what, what is uh, discussed, and, and take part actively, please. There are lots of interesting discussions going on currently. IPv6 um, deployment and training is one of the things that, that we are, or deployment is something that we want to help, but training is something that we are doing. We see that uh, V6 usage in Armenia is slow, so do something there. We are happy to help with training. We have uh, done the train the trainer program next year, um, so there are local language trainers available. Uh, also, we have Russian speaking trainers. Uh, courses also are available through academy.ripe, the uh, RIPE NCC Academy, so the online learning tool. Uh, so please have a look at that as well. There's lots of information that you can, can use. Um, RIPE Atlas, we want to have uh, 10,000 probes. That's our goal out in the world. Of course, more is better. We are nearly there with 9,200 and a bit. Uh, we have 212 bigger uh, RIPE Atlas anchors out there. Well, it's um, 
really taking off very nicely. I said we do a hackathon again. Uh, there are now more and more user experiences and, and uh, use cases there. Um, it's a good thing. If you look at uh, Armenia, we see, not surprisingly, that most of the probes are clustered also very locally around Yerevan. Um, so if you have a cousin with an internet connection somewhere further away, consider getting a probe and you know, getting, getting your cousin to plug it in, distribute them a bit further. RPKI, resource certification, it's going fairly well. We have 3,500 members um, with certificates for their address space. Um, all address space can be covered. It's um, not, not take up as, as far as we can see it. Again, up and to the right, it's good. Um, and it's so good that we considered uh, putting in some more effort in re-implementing our validator. Basically, the thing that we are currently using is working. It's not working very well for a large installation, so we want to basically improve that on, on all sorts of fronts. I mentioned our Agmentacy Academy, online learning platform. You don't have to go to, to our trainings in person, though we could make you coming uh, because we want to talk. But here the Academy you can do your, uh, your courses sort of in the common and you get a certificate as well. Um, have a look. It's useful. Uh, the new uh, LAR training course, now also online, also in there um, for new members. Is, so the idea is for new members, but of course, if you are a member for 20 years, things change over time, and even over the last five years, things change. So you might want to have a look and see what, uh, whether your, your knowledge is still up to date. Academic cooperation, RACI, um, we sort of come out, the, out of the academic environment like 25 years back, 20 years back, and uh, we want to, or we are currently re-establishing our connections quite nicely there. Basically, the idea is to have our, you, know, you, the operators, learn about what's going on in the academic internet research field, but also get the academics out and get them to understand what the operators' concerns are. Uh, so attendees that are selected from the RACI crowd receive travels, uh, travel tickets, uh, accommodation for regional events, for RIPE meetings, and of course, all the work can be and will be published on RIPE Labs afterwards. Should I talk about this? Nah, it's done. It's great. Um, IANA works um, as it always has worked. What we currently see, what we are still doing, is work in the uh, ICANN Accountability Cross Community Working Group, uh, where now that is looking a little bit at accountability in the um, AS, uh, in the, in the um, advisory uh, councils in, within ICANN and, and, and such groups. So that's something that comes back to our, our area again. And we are working on that and we are documenting more how um, that, that, that works. For instance, how is the ASO uh, address council accountable to, to whom? To, to you. Um, so that's, that's things that we are doing. Uh, otherwise, we are very happy that uh, this uh, stewardship transition has happened. I was always rather optimistic, but that's me. I'm always optimistic. There were a couple of darker moments where I thought, oh, this is not going to happen. There was this um, <clears throat> thing in Texas last week. It was very interesting. I was about to get on a plane, and I knew that the uh, court case was ongoing as, as we were sitting there trying to get on the plane. And I hoped that we would get a result before. Otherwise, I would have been in the air not knowing anything for hours. All went well, as you know. So that's good. And thank you to the community for making this possible and to, for taking part in, in the commenting there and, and the like. That's really all I have to say for today. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to get my headset and understand what you're, what you're asking me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions for Axel? Thank you. Thank you, Axel. Um, one of the founding hosts uh, Armix Foundation from Armenia. So uh, we're quite direct. Do you see a ripe meeting in Armenia in the nearest future? <laughs> you qualified it with the nearest future. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of RIPE meetings that I know about, um, and, and, and Armenia is not in there. 
um, we try to get around this, the service region as much as we can. Um, facilities are always, uh, of course, an, an issue. We run now meetings of more than 500, between 500 and 600 people, so that's something that we would have to look for. Um, I don't see a reason why not, really. Thank you. We have a WCIT in 2018 here in Armenia. So, so a mega rye meeting should can. fit, right? Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. WCIT. Oh my God, again. <laughs> More questions? Thank you. Thank you. So Thank much. you for having us.